is witchcraft, culture, or curse. African Union addresses the dark side of belief. The Pan-African Parliament, a legislative body comprising of 48 African countries, is taking a bold stance against witchcraft-related violence. They're developing groundbreaking guidelines to protect victims of virtual attacks and prevent the abuse of those accused of witchcraft. The initiative measures include criminalizing violence resulting from rich witchcraft accusations, banning the gruesome trafficking of body parts for rituals, and launching community education and awareness campaigns. Despite scarce data and unreported cases, violence and abuse of people accused of witchcraft are widespread throughout Africa. Contrary to popular belief, witchcraft-related attacks in Africa are not decreasing but appear to be rising, as noted by some experts. Over the past decade, Witchcraft-related incidents have haunted over 20,000 people across 60 countries. A survey conducted across 95 countries and territories found that 40% of all those respondents believed in witchcraft, and this belief transcended socioeconomic boundaries. The most vulnerable groups, including children, women, people with disabilities, the elderly, and people with albinism, are now gaining attention and hope for a safer future. Okay, why is this increasing? That's not entirely clear to me. I actually couldn't give you an explanation for that off the top of my head. Um, yeah, so Kenny is saying witchcraft-related violence. Yes, this is a real and serious phenomenon that continues to this day in Africa. Um, it's like basically the Salem witch trials. I mean, not not in the sense that they have the full-blown trials but it's it's literally witch hunting it's literally witch hunting yeah. um we meant a few years ago we interviewed leo igwe who is an incredible absolutely incredible nigerian activist who devotes a lot of his activism to um promoting critical thinking and helping people who have been the victims of witchcraft abuse and he talked about how in some regions the way that they do a witch test is by like throwing some bones and depending on the way that the bones land you're a witch or there's another witch test which is basically they will throw you in a river full of crocodiles what yes and he said the only why? reason why that witch test stopped is because the river dried up and the crocodiles died so they couldn't throw people in the river of crocodiles anymore but this is a real what thing that happens to this day and it's a genuine what? problem um why do they throw you in rivers with crocodiles because you're a witch oh, okay i thought it was a test well there, i mean it's kind of this it's in america one of the witch tests would be like oh we we throw you in the water and if you float you're a witch if you don't you're not but here's but the thing if you don't float then you drown yes so so, so you die the way yeah <laughs> so i was thinking that oh my god the crocodile one is the same way is if the crocodiles eat you you're not a witch but you're dead and if they don't eat you you're a witch and now we're gonna kill to be you. honest i don't remember exactly how the uh -huh. test worked but all i know is that people are getting thrown into a river of crocodiles god damn it man yeah um, so guys by the way go listen to our old interview with leo igwe if you just search atheist republic leo igwe you can find it you can hear him talk about these more in detail from firsthand experience he goes and he meets with people who live in witch camps and witch camps are like these banishment areas on the outside of cities and territories where they banish the people who they accuse of witchcraft and this includes you know people with albino people who are albino very elderly women elderly people babies there's um for some reason it's really really common to accuse children of witchcraft so um Why? they will torture children who they accuse of being witches oh yeah. um in some of the most insane ways that i have ever heard because it's basically this idea that if something is bad is happening in your environment your community like maybe there's a fire maybe someone fell out of a tree and got hurt so they can't work anymore like 
they blame it on something. And sometimes it's like an unruly child. So there's like a toddler that's being bad and they're like, oh, you're wishing this upon the rest of us. It's, it's really, it's really, really rough. And this, a lot of people don't know that this is something that continues to this day. We have witch hunts and trials to this day. And there are amazing activists like Leo Igwe in Nigeria who are fighting against it. So D, for example, saying his project is called Advocacy for Alleged Witches. Go look it up and donate if you can, because he does amazing work to help promote critical thinking, to help prevent these practices. And then he also will help assist people who have been abused, tortured, and banished for being accused of being witches. Um, um, and um, so which this step oh, by the Pan-African Parliament is extremely good news because this is a practice that happens throughout the region. Leo Igwe himself works mostly in West Africa. Um, and this is the potential to, I mean, hopefully really benefit people because this is a extremely harmful practice. And this is, Armin, I want you to listen to this quote from an article about this measure because I found this so interesting. So listen to this. He's saying, here's a quote. Some are concerned that calling out abuses based on beliefs in witchcraft entails being critical of certain cultures and portraying them as backwards or barbaric. That oh is God. why the Pan-African Parliament guidelines in the United Nations refer to repeatedly to quote unquote harmful practices stemming from witchcraft superstition to signal that the focus is on the harms that come from these beliefs and not the beliefs themselves, the expert explained. The beliefs themselves are the problem, though. Oh, my God, these people are trying to be sensitive around this, even about this? Like, but people are soft. Children are being tortured, and now you're still worried about control sensitivity? Like, oh, this is not something you want to tiptoe around. Like, even when it comes to children being tortured, you're like, oh, yeah, let's respect people's beliefs, and let's just reduce the harm, but not the beliefs that leads to. So how could they be effective if they're just going to not touch the beliefs? They're going to let people believe in this nonsense and just only, like, attack their... Like, okay, yeah, maybe, like, wishes are real, but let's not attack them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? Yeah. What the... This is, this, is so... this is so interesting to me. And it's saying, this is not supposed to be a means of prohibiting people from their beliefs, but to prevent the harm being caused by the belief in witchcraft. In fact... The beliefs are the know, source of the finish. harm. Let me, let me finish. In fact, the guidelines recommend repealing colonial era laws that existed in some countries which criminal which criminalize belief in witchcraft oh and they're repealing that since it challenges rights to freedom of belief religion and expression so that's actually correct that is that does challenge the right to freedom of belief religion and expression but here's what i armin when i first listened to this i had the exact same reaction as you because it's true it is the belief itself that is harmful even though the behavior is what they're targeting and is what's obviously the most harmful, belief in superstition is harmful to that individual. But I thought about it some more and I understand why they're taking this tactic because they have to get, they have to build rapport and get community buy-in. Otherwise they're not going to be effective at all. They have to. They have to build rapport and get community buy-in. Okay, okay, okay. It would be much, much harder to do that and probably less effective if they didn't take yeah. a behavioral approach. So I actually understand That's, why they're approaching it this way. If they're... Okay. I guess I will be judgmental based or not based on the motivation. If the judgment... If they're doing this because... We have to respect cultures and let's blame everything on colonialism. If that's the motivation, then I hope something I can't even say. I have <laughs> something that I can't even say on YouTube. Okay. Oh, God. Um, 
but but if the reason is like okay we need to we need to say these things so that we could get in the community okay if that's the real reason then okay fine I accept. yeah i don't know which one it is i don't know which one it is are these just like are these in institutions just so sensitive about people's culture or have they have they actually determined that this is their this is the most effective I've, based on the data and the research they have this is the most effective way of getting in i don't know which I one of these options there are concerns that if they approach this in a certain way they will come off as telling people that they are backwards and barbaric and not be able to reach those people that need it most because they're coming off that way. Yeah. And so if they take a more, hmm, what's the word I'm looking for? Conciliatory. Eh, that's not really the word I'm looking for. What institution? What are these institutions? Might be more effective. What is this it's institution? Gonna, is it? oh. So, um, the pan-african parliament is the one that is putting forward this proposal and this guideline right and then mm -hmm. it's up to the 48 member countries to actually implement it themselves um, mm -hmm. but there's going to be different programs some of them are about you know changing the legislation some of them are about community programs and education and yeah there's right. variety so oxymoron is saying something that is wrong Aksumar is saying, well, I disagree with Armin. As long as goal, goal of nonviolence is achieved, it's a, as our right, government should get away from uh, dictating beliefs as much as possible. So this is wrong in so many ways. First of all, um, the, um, we, when it comes to harmful beliefs, the base is the problem, not just the results. Like if you can't, if people believe in nonsense, uh, then the absurdities that comes out of that it's not really in your control so if you don't tackle this thing from the root um the corruption will keep spreading no matter how many times you cut down the branches right so you know the famous quote and who said this quote was it Vol voltaire or who is it once you believe in absurdities um you 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 justify atrocities i think yeah, it I was think voltaire I, voltaire yeah um but again and the government does not necessarily this is not about the government dictating beliefs as much as possible di dictating beliefs this is about providing um going to the roots so it's not about government coming in saying believe in this or believe in that the government is always like in many countries is effectively involved in spreading education critical thinking so not exactly telling people what not to believe but giving them the tools to detect what's true or what's not by themselves and that's basically the whole point of education so getting people's uh, thinking skills to a level where they could detect these th these things themselves that's definitely a role that governments have and should have and if that was higher in africa we wouldn't be having these problems but that's not so. exactly dictating beliefs like what i think what he's getting at is part of these this motion by the pan-african parliament is to repeal colonial era laws criminalizing the belief in witchcraft i agree with that right yeah yeah there shouldn't but be any law criminalizing belief in a practice of even course. though practice, okay. it should be but the the part the you part of the practice that are extremely harmful obviously need to be banned yeah but obviously that's a if if you're saying we should do this not that that's a false dichotomy we could do both right so you could criminalize like i don't say just because i say you have to go to the root of the problem which is the belief that doesn't mean like oh that means don't criminalize torturing people of course you need to criminalize that yeah, you yeah, could yeah, do yeah. both you could walk and chew gum at the same time like these are not mutually exclusive but you could what, at the same time that you do that you need to educate you need to come up uh, fix these from the bottom up not just from top down you could do both at the same time that that's different than dictating belief though that is imbuing exactly. education and critical thinking within a population which is a prerequisite to having a functioning democracy if you don't have a democracy that's it's less important <laughs> It, well, Susanna, that's what I'm saying. It's almost as if I'm not saying that the government should be dictating belief. It's almost as if I'm saying something else that oxymoron is not understanding. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I was clarifying because yeah. 
based on the way that you answered that question, like I, yeah, because when you said, oh, when the government doesn't have a role in dictating belief, and then you go, no, you're wrong. <laughs> no, he's wrong because he oh, doesn't understand terrifying. about what I'm trying, what I, what my prescription is. Like, mm -hmm. who's, ta who's talking about dictating beliefs, right? Yeah. Anyways, do we have? Okay, cool. Oh, I forgot to ask which countries, which African countries, you're pixely, which African countries are the most uh, have this practice the most? This, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I can accurately answer that question because this is way more expansive than my familiarity with the issue. I'm familiar with it in West Africa. I mm -hmm. believe okay. it is some of the northern areas of Nigeria that have it. Um, a pretty significant issue with it. it seems I could like be wrong. It's a more of a Christian <laughs> part of Africa than the Muslim. Is it true? It's mostly the Christian parts of Africa than the Muslim parts. It's a Christian thing, isn't it? I don't know if that's true because the Christian part of Nigeria right. is in the south. Just... I could be mixing up the location of things, but the the persecution. I, did, I just wanted a short answer because we need to move on. Yeah. Um, yeah one other thing, um, in Africa. Um, is Harry Potter not very popular in Africa because of all of this thing? No. no? Do we know? <laughs> okay, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> that really took me aback. Okay. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.